day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Did you do what I told you to do? And did you do what people told you to do? Did you do what the public party told you to do? Did you do what the Democrats told you to do? Did you do what your, your flesh or the races or unracing, whatever you want to call it, told you to do? Did you do what I told you to do? If I told you to love one another, did you do that? Did you do that? Lord, I didn't do that because the people said that we should not love these certain people. Did you do what I told you to do? Because in the end, that's all that's going to matter. When you go before God, what did he tell you to do? And he's not even telling you something that's hard. Well, I was under Christ because Christ is the way, right? That's right. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And he said in the script we just read is the foundation is the rock of Christ doing what he says. You can't, you're not, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that if you sit there and go before the eyes of God and say, my father, my physical father, my parent told me to hate people of this persuasion. My friends told me, hey, look, my pastor told me, hey, my best friend told me. But how's that going to stand before the eyes of God, people? How is that going to stand before the eyes of God that you did something because your flesh told you to do something opposite of what God told you? What's this going to do, people? Hey, I, 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 I joined this political party. And this political party told me to hate people. You can go, you can go down the list. Everything that you do, contrary to the word of God, everything that I do as well, and try to, I can't, I'm, what I'm saying is, don't, please don't think that you're going to have a defense if you consistently want to do opposite of what he told you. It is not by the law. He told to bear fruit through the love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. He told you to do that. He told you to love one another. He told you to forgive one another. He told you to give mercy to one another. He told you to do that. But if you sit there you let uh, police officers out there if you sit there and shoot people kill people discriminate against people because of the color of the skin what you're going to do when you go before the eyes of god what are you going to do if you sit there at, at you know that, that case that this happened and then they, they chased the man down because he was running down the street jogging but because of your taught and education and perception of saying the sand that these people because of the melon, just because of the melon, just because of the melon and the skin, they must have been the people that's been robbing. And therefore, we're going to go and put this to an end. And they're in jail, facing life in prison over a perception, over, over a lie, over a doggone lie. Don't use the thing that God hates. Let's go the rest of them so we can wrap up. I, I'm sorry I went over my hour, but I'm, I'll close up and then I'll pick it up next week. Or I'll pick it up on my uh, uh, personal recording. He says, verse 17, these are the things that God hates. And I'm asking you, don't use those tools. A proud look, lying tongue. Look at this. This one, just. Hands that shed innocent blood. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
Man, I, I, I'm going to have to come back and, and do this study again. So we, 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 we'll, we'll come back and do it. But a hand that sheds innocent blood. Are you kidding me? You wouldn't, you know, uh, when you kill an unarmed, unarmed person, when you kill a person for the purpose, sole purpose of their lack of melanin or melanin in the skin, when you kill somebody, women, children, men, just on the fact of the color of the skin, what is white or black? It don't matter. But I, this is this. It, it doesn't matter if you kill hands that shed innocent blood. <laughs> you randomly pick people from a group. You randomly those who sit there and, and even those that, that that are gay, and you sit there and shoot into a crowd. These people got angry and shot into a party. Hands are shed innocent blood. People walk into a grocery store. They call it a grocery poster. Go into the workplace, act a shooter. People who sit there and went into a school. Young man, recently, what? Young man, man and in parents, arrested because they shed innocent blood. You can't call somebody guilty because they have melanin in their skin or not melanin in their skin. And say, I'm going to kill them just because of that. So that's the whole purpose. I'm going to kill them. Somebody had nothing to do with whatever you was upset about, and you killed them. Hands are shed innocent blood. We're talking about the six things that God hates. I don't think we're going to do the next third. We're going to go through it again because I read I'm just too far with my time. So let's keep on. Hands, I just want to put the hands. In. You tell me that the deep things apply for my history and in our current situation. Hands that shed innocent blood. Wow. Six days that the Lord hate. Six days that the Lord hate. Look at this. A heart that advises wicked imagination. We're talking about when you, because of the, your your hate towards somebody because of the color of their skin, whether they have color, whether they're white or black, there's only only shade anyway, right? Of melon. I, I'd rather go and say lack of melon, abundance of melon, and you would hate somebody just for the sole purpose. You would advise wicked imagination, wicked things to do to those people just because of the melon or lack of melon in their skin. You're going to advise wicked imaginations. You're doing things that God hates, but you think that it's going to please your flesh. It's going to please those who agree with you. You, you, man, how, what are you going to do when you go before the eyes of God? What is it going to be an excuse you're going to get when you go before the eyes of God? Here's another one. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. When you sit there, and, <laughs> I mean, the people that went in January the 6th, they ran to do mischief. They, and did y'all, you know, a lot of people would try to cover it up. These people peed on the wall, stunk on the wall, cursed people, called people different names, uh, hit people with flagpoles and, 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 and broke windows and all that stuff. Feet to be swift to run in mess. I'm trying to say, what does sick thing God hate? And what you gonna go before? Every last one's gotta go before God. How about this? Feet that be swift in okay, uh, verse 19. A false witness. That goes right back to last again. A false witness. How many people have died? How many people have had mobs go and hurt and kill people because of a false witness? Lying again. A false witness to speak is what? Lies. You know, that baby said, that, look, 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 basically, hey, wrapping this up a look, hey, he basically said, the six things God hate, two things are basically replicated, lying tongue and a false witness that speak his lies. Two things, 
So are you lying just because the person has a different political persuasion, just because the person has different colors in his skin, melanin in his skin, or lack of melanin in his skin, that you become a false witness because you want to get those people, you want to sit there and backstab somebody because you don't like the color of the skin, you're going to sit there and think that that's what God loves, you, that, that's not what God loves, that's what God hates, you try to tell me that you're going to go before God, do you recognize you will go before God? Do you recognize that every last one of us will die in our flesh? And then you got to stand before God. The Bible said that at death, there's judgment. What are you going to say when you do something opposite what he told you? Six things that God hates. Let's come on. The last one. Oh, God, man. Please hear the words that's coming from the Bible. Hey, glory to God. He says, verse 19, a false witness and speaker's lies, like we just said about, and then the last one, the last one, he that sowed discord among the brethren, division. He that sowed discord among the brethren. I just gave you six, seven things on abomination to God itself. See, we like to sit there and categorize one another because you got a lot of melanin in your skin or you have a lack of melanin in your skin. So we're going to create these little divisions based on that. And then we're going to base a whole bunch of lies based on that. And we're going to sit there and kill people based on that. We're going to get false witness based on that. We sit there and have political parties and we're going to sit there and say based on the fact that you are you, I can't stand you because you have a different party. I'm going to apply the things that God hates. And then you're going to go before God one day. And you know, history, look, scientifically speaking, factually speaking, humanly speaking, as of this day and time, every last one of you will die. <laughs> one day, what are you at? You can die at birth, or you can die at 40, 20, 30, 80, 90, over 100, but you still will die. And did anybody dispute that? And after that, it's called going before God. And when you sit there and say, I use the tools that you hate because I didn't like the political affiliation. I did not like the color of their skin or the lack thereof. Why didn't like their orientation? So therefore I applied the six things that you hate instead of applying the things that you love. Wow. Is it worth it? I know you want to feel good in your flesh, but let me tell you something every last one of you i don't care what news media you're looking at every last one of us gonna have to answer to god and god is not gonna sell what well, i heard i listen to fox news i listen to cnn i listen to this politician i listen to my wife i listen to my husband i listen to my parents i listen to all those people so therefore i apply the tools that you hate because I listen to them. Just, hey, we'll close out. Man, I, man, there's so many. Oh, God, man, we can talk about these topics over and over again. And maybe we do until you get it right. I remember Fred Price used to sit there. Somebody said, Fred, you keep talking about the same thing. Well, until you start doing the things you should be doing, then maybe I need to keep doing it until you get it right. And maybe we need to keep focusing on it and just use different topics to go with it. But what are you going to, Adam said, this woman you gave me, I did eat. But God asked him distinctly, Adam, did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? That's what he's going to ask you concerning what he's going to, concerning what you, you individually individually every last one of you and those of you to sit there and say when they, when you stand before god and said lord i 
I, 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 I didn't, I didn't know you existed. What you gonna say? I didn't know you didn't exist, or uh, my science told me you don't exist. People told me you don't exist. What, what, what's gonna happen? What, what, do you understand? Don't, don't, don't. You just want to shut up. Just shut up. But let's go about the saints, though. Let's let's really let's talk about the saints. Saints, what are you gonna do when you go before Christ? If you are fortunate enough to go before Christ, maybe you might you might make it in because you made a quality decision while you're alive. But what are you gonna tell Christ when He said a new commandment I gave you? that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also should love one another. What are you gonna to say to Christ when you go before him? <laughs> See, I know you can go before people. I know you can go before your friends. I know you can go for people that got the same melanin in the skin or lack thereof. I know you can go before them. But what are you gonna do when you go before him? Because you're gonna go before him as you as a believer since you say Christ is your Lord and Savior. What are you going to do? And what are you going to tell him when he said that he who hates his brother is a murderer and has no eternal life abiding in him? What are you going to tell him? I did it because I was taught that way. Are you going to do the same thing that Adam did? You understand where I'm coming from? Adam said, this woman you gave me. But God said, did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat? No, this woman here. No, it's Adam. I didn't ask you that, Adam. <laughs> I did not ask you that, Adam. And that's what God is going to say to every last one of us. What did God say? Jesus dealt with the devil by what is written. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you sit there and go before God? Think about it. Meditate on it. Go ask your pastor and say, Pastor, I heard what you're telling me, but what am I supposed to do when I go before God? What am I supposed to say? That you approved it? Can you approve to go against what God told me to do? Can you approve the six things? Prove to you the six things that God had. Can you, you pastor, can you do that for me? Can you do that? Do you have the authority? And can I take that authority when I go before God? Pastors, what are you going to do when you have to answer to the fact that you taught people to use the tools that God hates? What are you going to do, pastor? What are you going to do? What are you going to say? What are you going to say when you go before God? That's the thing that all of us have to sit there and recognize. When it said name is written in the book, the name's not, if your name is not blotted out, how do you get your name blotted out? Well, I think that if you sit there and do opposite what he told you to do, you might have a problem. You might have a problem. Man, you know, all kinds of topics you might have. <laughs> I may have another topic. You might have a problem if you don't do what he told you to do. It doesn't matter what title you have. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the gospel. It doesn't matter whether you're an atheist. It doesn't matter. If you wake up as an atheist when you die and you see another life, another reality, what are you going to tell God? See, I know we, some of us rejected God because of people. And that's what some people will say. Well, God, these people that you gave me, don't use it. Don't go ahead. Say, Lord, I'm just ignorant. Have mercy on me. Because you're going to need it. But people, all those people that are believers, man, yep. Yeah. You use the tools that God hates. Six things, seven things, division. What are you going to do when you go before God and said, I use those tools because of people of my flesh? And do you think? You're going to get away with it. That's what you have to choose. I hope somebody listens to the entire video. I'll break it down in seconds for for 
for editing and put out there. But for today, those who listen, let's say, what's written, do that, not what people say. I don't care what a pastor says. I don't care what a political party say. I don't care what, what your parents say. If they say anybody does anything, I'll do what God says. Because you're going to be accountable individually. Your parents are going to die. The politicians are going to die. The political party is going to die. <clears throat> All these things are temporal. And if you foundation is based on temporal, so it's eternal. Man, I, I pray for you. I already feel bad about the people already died in hate. The people that already got a history. You should you 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 should you should pray that you don't be like the people who died in hate. And they thought they got away with it. If you don't, I understand people don't even want to go by the, they don't want to go by the history, the negative history that occurred. <laughs> All I can tell you is this: if whatever those six, seven things that God hate, and if those things occurred in our history by the people that we love, or that we said that those are the people that uh, we're feeling our pride on, we want, we want to embrace them. You can embrace lies, you can embrace the six days that God hate, but I'm gonna tell you something, they already have now gone before God and judgment has already been made toward them, but judgment has not been made toward you. And I don't tell whether you 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 got melon in your skin or lack of melon. It applies to both everybody. It doesn't matter what people did to you. You don't hate people because of those people. You forgive them because he said, if you can forgive, I can forgive you. But if you don't forgive, I won't forgive you. What does the word say? Amen? All right. Hey, look. That's the good news is just do what the word says, what Christ says. That's the good news. See... <laughs> And, and look, if you're alive, all you do is repent. He said, he said, you know, if you confess your sins, he's faithful just to forgive you of your sins. That's the good news. That's it. We're going to wrap up with the good news. Regardless of whether you use the six or seven things that God hates, if you confess your sins to him, now while you're alive and got air coming out of your mouth or coming into your mouth, the good news is he'll forgive you and me. He will forgive us. That's the good news, man. That's the good news. That's the gospel. Yeah, we got a bad history. Yes, we all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But we can be forgiven because that's what Christ died for us. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, I love that. That's, that's a blessing. We'll wrap it up with the revelation of this. I may have fallen short. But I got a God in heaven willing to forgive me right here and now. The Bible said, heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. So those that God had called to listen to this all the way to the end. Good news. Christ came to save the world, not condemn the world. Well, I'm trying to tell you, don't condemn people because that's not your job. Do what the word says, he'll love you. He'll forgive you. Don't do what he said. You build on the sand, you'll fall. <laughs> the good news is he forgiven you. Amen. All right. Well, I hope you have a good day. I uh, hope you have a great week. And uh, we will catch you uh, next time, next Sunday. Uh, go live, go around nine o'clock, coming on nine. Amen. Uh, but uh we, we, I just want to just read the word to stick. But let's, let's, let's confront life with the word of God. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for the word that you gave today. If it's just for me, hallelujah, I receive it. But I pray, Lord, that it's for those who, who now recognize that they need to stand on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ, not on the foundation of lies, but the foundation of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, I thank you. And all of us who have operated in the tunes that God hates, 
I thank you for your mercy and grace. All we have to do is just confess and, and you forgive us. That's the good news. Christ came to save the world. Christ came to save sinners like me. And all I need to do is receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing to the people who are listening. Thank you, Father, for the people that will hear this message that the gospel is mercy and grace. It's through Jesus Christ. And that we'll learn to give that mercy to one another because we love one another because you commanded us to do so. Therefore, we stand on the foundation of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>